So yes, uh, I have been to prison in my country as well. So I would give a list of things that would stress me. But then normally I, I would like to, do, uh, to go physical most of the time. So I do running. I have a running group, a running team. Uh, that's what we usually try to do uh, at least three, four times a week. Because staying as a refugee in, a re in refugee camps, uh, most of the time you have plenty of time doing nothing. That by itself is very stressing to a lot of people who doesn't know how to handle their time. So that's why we volunteer to organize some kind of activities, for acti activities, running, football, so that they, they can stay active and, and, and entertain themselves as well. So yeah, so I'm here uh, through the invitation of Kunila and uh, hoping to get um, training so that I can help a lot of other refugees uh, here and around me. So yeah, that sums up my, my introduction to myself. Great. Thank you so much, David. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. How about Kristen? Um, wow. I, um, I am in Northern California in the United States. And I am a long-term trauma counselor. I call license. Um, and I'm on two really big humanitarian committees at ASEP and um, at FRIA, which is for national sexual abuse. Um, and, um, and we're starting the VET project. Um, and I am um, really interested in a nonverbal technique that we don't have to do sequencing because I am a TFT humanitarian trainer. Um, but um, sequencing is um, very difficult to teach and there's a huge language barrier. And so very, very interested in, in this and hoping that I can integrate this into what I do. I've been playing all week with my, with my clients. Um, I, use TT, I use energy psych because developmental trauma doesn't work with, doesn't process with out emotional regulation. And um, so I, um, you know, EMDR, hypnotherapy, alchemical hypnotherapy, all the stuff I'm trained in, the energy psych along with some other techniques works really well. Um, personally, um, it's been a sad week. Um, I had to put my dog to sleep on Friday. Oh. And, and, but it's been um, beautiful in the sense that it's forced me to um, really, really tap and really use my meditation techniques. And she had a beautiful passage that was very spiritual and very connected and um, really helped me understand the importance of um, using the, refer the, the references. So that's kind of, that's where I'm at. Um, I'm a meditator, I'm a tapper, I'm a walker, I'm a hiker. You know, uh, so about just about do everything. Mm. So I'm also um, a sexual abuse survivor. Mm. Hey. So. Thank you. And, and we will all say now. Hi, Christine. Hi, Christine. Hi, Christine. I, you know, this thing, it might seem silly uh, that we actually want everybody to say their name and we say hi, but as you've noticed, and as you'll see if you look at this later, um, Everybody smiles up because it brings back some kind of implicit memory of school. You know, the first day you say your name and everybody goes, hello. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it really makes the most hardened group of people loosen up and smile. So we really recommend that. It's, it's, it's a vital part of our starting of a workshop to actually do that. Yeah, and everybody wants to be named. I mean, with the name that, that you find is coming, I mean, to, to, to your heart. The name that was given to you by your parents. You know, it's like... So when you hear it, it's of the actual of your existence. It's calling you back into your body and into the now. Mm -hmm. So the next person to say their name, we won't be surprised because I'll have to say it first, is <laughs> going to be Shian. Hi there, Shian. Do you hear us? Shian. Hi, I hear you. Um, actually, my name is... Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Hello. 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 Can, can you hear you? Me hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Hello. She can't hear us apparently. No. Have you muted your? If she has can you hear me? We yes. Are, we Hello. Are, we are sending her an, a message. Ask if she has muted her microphone. Perhaps. Ask her if she has muted her microphone. Uh, we'll see. We don't. Well, if, if she's on the phone, she might not. It, it shows that she's muted on the it screen. Shows she's muted. Yeah, that's what I thought. But, but she doesn't hear us tell her to unmute. Oh, but we are writing her a message on because there yeah. is yeah Zoom. So we are writing her a message to see. Um, Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yeah. we hear you. Mm -hmm. You hear us. We just write her that she has muted. Hello? Hello? Yeah, now, do you hear us now? Uh, this is Cheyenne. Yep. Hi, Cheyenne. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, Cheyenne. Oh, okay. Hi. Hi. Hi, Hi Cheyenne. Hi, Cheyenne. Uh, my stressor is tech. Uh, hello. My stressor is technology. <laughs> um, but um, I live in. Uh, I live in, in Delo in the United States in Delaware. Um, it's um, almost directly east of uh, Washington, D.C. Can you still hear me? Yeah, we hear yeah. you. Yeah. Yes, we can say yes all the time. Yeah. Yes, we hear you. Okay. Um, and I run a complementary and alternative medicine department in a hospital. My background is as a mental health and addictions counselor. Okay, and I've uh, done a lot of study with uh, indigenous people mm -hmm. and also um, hypnosis, NLP, um, energy healing, Reiki, therapeutic touch, EFT, some work with Donna Eden, um, HBLU. So a lot, a lot of stuff. I am a licensed acupuncture detox counselor and um, acu detox specialist in Delaware. Um, and I want, I want to take this training because I want to work more with trauma mm -hmm. and um, more with younger people whose language skills may not be as uh, as good. I really like EFT. I use it every day, and um, so I'm I'm very interested in uh, TTT, especially because language isn't needed. Um, I use uh, um, meditation and um, and EFT and Reiki as a way to deal with my stress. Um, I can't remember the other questions, <laughs> so I hope that's I hope that's enough. That's, that's, that's lovely. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank you. Thank you. So I think we come to the to Robin. Are you there? You can hear us? I'm here. Hello. I can hear. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is Robin. Hi, Robin. Hi, Robin. Hi, Robin. Um, so my issue is being heard. <laughs> so, uh, uh. That just came just came up just now. Um, and I and thank you to Olson Ganella for putting this together. I'm an active member of Freya and looking to bring energy techniques to people who have had sexual trauma. And it's really important that the techniques we use on a large-scale basis don't create ab reactions. Mm. So I'm encouraged to learn more. 
that TTT may be the safest way to not have ab reactions in dealing with a challenging situation. So I'm interested in learning more. I have done every energy technique under the sun training just because I can't get enough of it. I think I think, okay, I've learned it all, and then something else comes along more exciting than before. So I'm an avid student, and my greatest stress is currently, I have two homes, one in Cleveland and one in Tucson, Arizona, and I have a, um, an adult child in each of those locations that has been undergoing stress. My son has had three traumatic brain injuries, oh. and is really just lost, lost, lost. And he loves tapping, anything tapping. And he, when he was in a healthier place, he used to bring all of his wounded friends through the house. Mom, would you do tapping with so-and-so? Because their girlfriend broke up with him. Yeah. Mom, would you? <laughs> so he, he knows um, and loves this stuff. I'd love him to do more now. But traumatic brain injury and resistance seem to go together. together and yeah and I have a um, family member in the other town who had a really long course of being addicted to pain medication from surgeries that stemmed from a date rape when she was 14 so to see even though this has been my field in healing sexual trauma to have it happen to my own family member and to be so um, helpless to stop the progression of damage that it did in her life. Now, she's doing much, much better, but she married someone who's into addiction. So I, I use it all the time for myself, and I, I, it's probably my full-time job is clearing my own trauma and keeping myself peaceful. Hmm. And again, I'm really looking forward to getting to know this group, but also to to really see what's possible with a technique that doesn't create any ab reaction. So thank you for doing this. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for joining. And, and the question of ab reaction is, is frequently brought up. And I usually, when it comes up, I usually turn to Vanilla and I say, Vanilla, how long have you been doing this? Yeah. So and then I say, since... February of 2007. And during this time, uh, have you ever run into an ad reaction doing TTT? No, I have not, actually. Even though working with um, many who have been into severe, severe trauma, trauma reactions and uh, responses, yeah. So I haven't, actually. Oh. That's so encouraging. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Could, could you explain what that is, what you were talking about? That I didn't... reaction is flooding. It's when somebody goes into a state where all of a sudden there is no stopping. They're, they, they get caught back into the okay. event and, and they don't snap out of it. Like you know, the flashback, I mean, really uh, going into the food. It's too strong. Yeah, too yeah. strong and too much. And that is what we say. It's like we, we come in the end to our manifesto, which is the, one of the points is no suffering because mentioning what you have lived through can bring back your suffering. And people have suffered enough who have gone mm -hmm. through um, situations that have become uh, given traumatic responses. Yeah. So that's and also the fact that we're working as language free as possible is probably contributing to the fact that we're actually rarely running into that. We'll, we'll, we'll get back to that. We'd like, what we'd like to do now that the presentation is done is we'd like to just bring you swiftly through a number of the situations where we are using our way of working so that you can see how and where it's being used. Once you get the map and the context, we'll jump straight into the details and um, you'll be surprised how little you need to understand to understand it. And just before that, I was just thinking that there was some um, abbreviation mentioned that perhaps not everybody is um, familiar with. It was mentioned, I mean, like EFT and TFT and TAT, um, which are EFT, emotional freedom technique, and TFT, 
Thought field therapy are the two original, you could say, and TFT is the one original, and EFT like the second original of the tapping modalities. And, and then the TAT, somebody mentioned TAT, wasn't it? Somebody mentioned TAT. Yeah, Emily. Yeah, Emily did, which is tapas acupressure technique, which is, um, we use part of it, which we call, we call it head holding. It's just holding the back in the front of your head, which we will go into later on in this, in this seminar. And then several people have mentioned Freya. So one of the Freya, um, engaged in Freya, could you please just explain what Freya is for those who are not um, acquainted to this? Uh, this is Robin, and it, it, we came together to provide uh, relief from trauma survivors. It's the name of our group. And the I keep forgetting it. it. It's not a technique, it's a group. Yeah. It's, so could yeah. you just tell what the abbreviation means so that we... I just forgot it. Okay, other Freya people, it's freedom. Um, I say Freya so often, I forgot what it stands for. <laughs> Steve or Holly? Freedom from anybody remember? Any of your other guys who remember the, what it stands for? <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't remember it either. Um, I, don't, okay. I don't know. It's one of the challenge. Yeah, it's one of the challenges with um, with abbreviations. It's yeah. freedom from uh, the, yeah. the general direction is freedom from from, from sexual. Okay. Uh, yeah, anyway, and no, no, no worries. I, it's, uh, I mean, we have also yeah. been communicating with John about Freya, but I don't remember what it stands for. Right. Well, that, apparently, neither none yeah. of us do either. No. <laughs> <laughs> Freya is not sexual. Um, I mean, recovering and and and, right. and bouncing back from right. it's recovery from sexual abuse. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, so that's that's that's, that's, so that's it, it in a nutshell. So good. Yeah. Was it any uh, other abbreviation that we mentioned? That yeah, we mentioned NLP, Neuro Linguistic yeah. Programming. And if you don't know what it is, it's it's a it's a toolbox that's based on how language is used uh, in subjective experience and how you can use that in a therapeutic context. <laughs> and I used, uh, I used the uh, ACEP, I said ACEP, which yeah. is ACEP, and it's the Association for Comprehensive Energy Psychology. And so probably all the clinicians know what that is, but the other people might not. No, okay, good, thank you. So we'll take you on a little trip here now. So allow uh, Ganela to be your guide as we swiftly uh, run through a number of the situations where TTT uh, has been used successfully since 2007. Yeah, so we, um, we name it trauma tapping technique as the first aid for stress and trauma. And the reason uh, is that we started out working uh, with people who themselves were uh, traumatized after war and genocide. Um, this picture itself is from um, from DRC, from Democratic Republic of Congo. And this is actually a group of uh, children. Some of them live in the street, and some are, have been um, recruited as uh, soldiers in the conflict in Eastern Congo. But we named it trauma tapping technique because tapping, we think this is good um, because that's tapping. Sometimes we just call it tapping, like we say, and uh, trauma because that's where it originated. Now we have sometimes call this TTT tension tapping technique because in some areas like in Sweden, also like in the Netherlands and uh, Germany and other places, when you mention the word trauma, people will say, we don't call her, you know, somebody else is doing that. That's only to do with um, professional psychiatrists or psychotherapists. And that's why we also call it first aid. So we don't say this doesn't exclude, um, or this, um, this doesn't exclude any other kind of treatment, but this is a first aid. Many people cannot get any help in years from professional um, um, psychiatry or, or psychologists. Um, so that's the reason we call it sometimes tension tapping technique to make people not be concerned about this word trauma. The same, we never say the word therapy because then also, so therapy and trauma are words that um, therapy we never mention except for when we do our, our clinical work ourselves. In, when we're teaching this technique, we mention the word of tension 
and stress. And when it is possible, also trauma for those who know that they're traumatized. Yeah. Okay. And as part of the positioning, our plan is, our devious world domination plan is that one day this is going to be part of first aid techniques. So mouth to mouth, Heimlich maneuver, you know, heart massage, and for emotional uh, stress and traumatic stress, tapping, right? So that's why we call it a technique very carefully. And the reason we call it both trauma and tension is also that the same abbreviation will turn up in whatever clinical trials we manage to initiate. So whether it's a tension tapping technique clinical trial or a trauma tapping technique clinical trial, the search word, word will be for TTT in either case. Okay. Um, and then it is like for us, we use this and teach this in any kind of environment. Um, both then, I mean, in one end as relaxation and stress relief. This is from um, a music festival in my village in um, Bohuslän in the west part of Sweden, um, where we were arranging uh, this workshop. This is uh, what you call a party tent. So then people who came to the music festival could, could join this workshop. But also in this workshop, I mean, later on, um, we found out because I got an email after this workshop from a person who is now our colleague who said that, thank you for that workshop. It actually saved my life because he was uh, suicidal and had decided to, to mm. suicide. But then when he learned this technique that he knew nothing about, he felt he came back to life again. So even in such a setting, you never know. I mean, because this technique many times have saved lives. I mean, that's for sure. So, yeah. Right. Um, this is a refugee center in Finland, in our neighbor country, outside Helsinki. And that's why I say it is, I mean, for the possibility of integration, it is very important to be, uh, have a possibility to um, decrease and regulate your stress level because for integration and to manage in a new country, you have to learn a new language, you have to learn a lot of new things. And when you are, as you all know, when you are stressed too much, it is very difficult to focus and concentrate on learning new things. So that is a, a crucial part of integration. Too. Um, this, what you say, it's language independent, and this was a training we did in, with the displaced pygmies in DRC, the most, one of the most deprived um, indigenous peoples. They were thrown out of their, or evacuated from the forest where they live and um, have very difficult to manage in the, this modern world. But, um, and they also enjoyed this very much, as you see, it became like a, a, a session of, of laughter. They found it very funny and very strange, but very nice. So that's, yeah, doing, but without any language. Of course, my friend there in the middle, um, um, he does here, uh, no, Dominique, he um, was the translator. He grew up among the, the, the pygmies and, and so the little language you need, he could explain. Okay. Yeah, and that's part of, of our manifest. Uh, it, it, we could work completely language independent, but it's, it's easier when there's a translator who can just explain parts of, of a group session. And also we always try to find an alley uh, before we go anywhere. We never go directly. So in this case, Dominic, the guy in the middle, is the alley that opens the door that already has the trust of the group, which is the absolutely fastest way to reach a group of a different culture or, or language. And that is how David and, and myself, we work together. It, um, he is, uh, was our, is and was our ally in, uh, it's Ali or ally? Ally. Ally, uh, when we were working in the Netherlands. Very nice. And then we can do it, as we say, we do this work mainly in groups. So this was a group of, in, um, in Sierra Leone, as you know, there was a civil war there for 10 years. And uh, these women were left um, widows. So they already belonged to an organization. They called themselves Peace Mothers. So as we've mentioned before, it was already a group, already existed. And this tapping was, was um, just, um, into the already existing uh, work, um, and there, the guy in the in the what do you say? What do you think? Uh, a square shirt, shirt. Um, is our colleague from Rwanda. So he is not from from Sierra Leone, but then he, being a survivor of the genocide in Rwanda and being an, what he would say an African, 
he could relate to also the people there, not only me being a white guy, um, Zungu, um, he could um, be uh, transferring this information in a, in a different way compared to myself and then to these people. And the woman in the blue shirt, she's all the staff of the organization we worked with. So after one day of training, she already knew, so she could just continue the training without us. And that's also a vital part of the concept of the way we do TTT. Group trainings, a local alley, and the empowerment of leaving it to them to continue and do it. That they become the owners of the tool and the spreading. So empowerment is, is such a healing modality. And then this is in Afghanistan where none of us have been, but, but our colleague Salim Rajabi, who I met in New York, uh, and I was teaching this uh, tapping in the subway train between, uh, um, it was between somewhere in Manhattan, perhaps Wall Street and Bronx. We were going for a theater because he's a theater worker. And uh, he asked uh, about this technique because he had heard it from his colleague, Jalmar, who I knew since before. And he said, can you teach me? And I said, of course, but you only have this time here. So he was one of the, those who had the fastest or shortest training. But then after three days, he went back to Kabul and he started doing trainings with widows also there, in, uh, widows of the war in Afghanistan. So he is, he is um, hopefully he will join us in this next uh, webinar. So that is how it can be. And it's culturally adaptable. I mean, so he will teach them these um, widows and then they, they do it within their group, which is a support group already, or an existing support group. And he was already doing work with them um, which is called memory box, in bringing back all the small pieces of memories that they had from their husbands who passed in the, in the war. And during that process, they were telling the story, they got very emotionally charged, and then he was, you know, before that, then showing the, the, the tapping so that they could help themselves through that process, and then remembering without having all that pain. And a question we often get, especially with uh, people from the U.S., is, is it okay for people to touch each other, to, to, to learn how to actually do this to each other like they're doing in the image. And in this case, it is okay because, because they're all women. Um, and I mean, there's ways of teaching this as self-tapping in a group, which allows everybody to, to take care of their own self-regulation. And there is also, we almost always, I would say always train with people doing it to each other. And there has never been a problem with this. No, and that is all, I mean, for us, it is in the US and in Canada who this touching issue is, is difficult. Um, because like in Canada, teachers are not even allowed to touch their, their students at all. In Sweden, we have no problem with this. I mean, children learn how to massage each other in school because that's part of the, 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 the curriculum for, for, for schools. And, and, and similar in, in other countries, it, touch is not a problem, but where it is, and that's why we say you have to do it in the way that is appropriate for the place you are and, and always offering just, this is the way you can do it, is that okay? And, and depending on this also with men and, men and women, women and women, men and men, so it's all depends, that's what we all say, and it says here above me, it all depends, that's our, one of our, um, what do you say? It's, um, it's one of our absolute mantras, mantras. <laughs> okay. of the manifest. It so. depends, because you never know, it depends on where you are, it depends, always it depends. So the answer is never sure. Like, like Bert said that it is like, you can never do wrong, you know? You can never do wrong, but you have to be sensitive to the place where you are and like working with the people of the place um, before um, checking things. It's like, like so, oh, on Friday, or oh, last week, two weeks ago, I had a, 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 um, a training in the refugee center in Sweden. And uh, there are people from Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, uh, Eritrea, and um, Afghanistan, yeah. And uh, so then before the training, I went there several days before, I met the one who is like the Dawit there, who was uh, Zia from Afghanistan, who was already taking care of people, caring for people. So um, we were talking and I was showing him and seeing, do you think this is something for the people here, who are the, the, the guys from, from Afghanistan? And he said, yeah, that's fine. And then I met also, uh, Abdul Salam from, from Eritrea and uh, the same with him and he said yeah I think this is really very good and then also Mahmoud from, from Iraq so they were already informed when I came there to do the training so then it went I mean so fine because they could explain everything already very well for the 
for the others. So that is this making it, you know, um, accepted for, for, for others, never just jumping into a place without knowing. Yes. Uh, and we really, we really want you to take this with you. When we say it depends, can be the answer of any question you have, not only when it comes to TTT, but also any issue in your life. You know, should I have, uh, should I have a, a glass of um, water or a glass of milk? Will there be an ad reaction or not? Can these people touch each other? Can I use an alley? Should I do this without an alley? In every single case, it will depend. So if you accept that there is no clean cut recipe or answer for anything when it comes to this and just everything depends, you'll be fine. You'll always be fine. Um, and then this is what we mean, this low practitioner dependency is what we already mentioned, that you pass it on, this is what we call pay it forward, because we love this film, if you haven't seen it, see it, this pay it forward, it's an American film from 10 years back or something, um, and it is that anybody can learn this. This was a training with um, parents' education in the north of, of, of Rwanda, so then this is already one of the, the, the parents from the who is doing the training with the, the others after one or two sessions we had together. So that is what we call, and that's why we say this is a very democratic tool because anybody can do it, anybody can, like Ulf said, own it. And, because, and that's why it's empowering to see that, like for those who were considered victims, which is not very uh, good for your self-esteem to be considered a victim of violence or victim of rape, and get a tool in their hand that you can actually use and help others, and they will, or smiling and saying, wow, I slept well, I slept like a baby. That's very empowering because that's when pure healing starts. It's when you can help somebody else to, to recover from something that you have had um, experience of uh, on your own. Um, this is from the place where we learned this, this, this greeting that we did in the beginning. Um, this place is called City of Joy, and you see what the, their, their mantra is transform pain to power. And these women are there for six months training and before they go back to the community. And they were all, um, um, are all survivors of, of gender-based violence and GBV, which is gender-based violence um, in the conflict in Eastern Congo. Because uh, rape and other forms of, of, of gender-based violence is a very cheap tool. You don't need to use even a tool, a weapon, I mean. Um, you don't need even to use one bullet and the, still you will destroy the community completely. This is from South Sudan. Um, this was in 2013. Three, uh, yeah. And as you know, there has been a lot of, of, of uh, conflict also after the independence of this, the youngest nation of the world. Um, and, um, but still, and there is a lot of, of tension between different groups um, but here what we call integrity preserving is that you can actually heal from things without mentioning what it is even if it, like this was a training of um, peace mobilizers so they all come from all over the country from different uh, groups who have been um, in conflict with each other so that you can actually heal from things without mentioning uh, even if it's something that would be confrontive to to other people in this in the in the same group yeah um, and these are survivors of, of torture in Chad. Um, I don't, um, in Chad was this dictator of Hussein Habre during the 90s, who are actually condemned with the International Tribunal uh, of, uh, just um, a month ago for, for uh, crimes against humanity. But there was a lot of torture in Chad during that period. And, and um, these women um, <coughs> finding it very, um, what do you say, non-invasive. Uh, that you can use it without um, any kind of, of uh, other kind of reaction. Um, then epigenetics, I don't know how, I mean, it is, I mean, what you have found more and more, it is that actually living through trauma will change the expression of the genes, which means that it will also transfer to the next generation. These guys, they grew up after the genocide in Rwanda, but they still have a lot of stress. Um, and some of it comes, of course, from living in a, in a, in a surrounding where brutal things happen, but it's also because it is transferred from one generation to another. So they all, I mean, so many of these guys, they would call our Robert, our Rwandan colleague after this training, saying, well, you know, I've slept and I don't feel so stressed, you know, 
So that's why I say, I mean, all over the world, this should be used as a tool to teach um, children in school from daycare or, or you know, from, from preschool, because you go through a lot of stressful things. And like in Rwanda, if you, you miss your exam, you will not pass to the next level and then and, and school costs money in most um, even more in, in, in the neighbor country Congo and many other places. It's very stressful. And then if you can have a technique that could actually de-stress you, that's fantastic. And in schools in Sweden, the pressure becomes harder and harder to children. They 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 need I mean everybody needs technique like this. So that's why we we love this technique. And this um there's also, I mean, another place, these were uh, refugees in, in DR Congo, these women, and they would say that, what are you, what are, why are you teaching us this? We, want, we need food, we are hungry. And then we could only say, I mean, we are, don't have any food. But if you learn how to, 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 to get the stress out of your body, you will be able to take better decisions because your, your stress will make it very difficult to look ahead because you will be living in the past. And then they said, yeah, actually you're right. When we came back, they said, it's right. Something happened actually. And this are also, I mean, because we work with survivors, but also with the perpetrators of violence, both children of, of war, child soldiers, and these are prisoners in Rwanda. So these are all in prison after 21 years after the genocide, which means that they have committed severe crimes. But for them also, I mean, that our colleague <laughs> who came to do the training, they found it fantastic because she's a survivor of the genocide and so they said to her you know how come that you come to us you are a survivor but and we are the perpetrators are you a spy of the government or how come that you are coming here and then she told her story that she felt you know relieved from her hatred and her her feelings of revenge um when learning these techniques and she said that now it's fine for me to come here and i think you need the same because it's not easy for you too what you have done and and the, the situation we live through in our country so they also, you know, would say that this technique, I don't know if it's good or bad, one of these guys said, because it makes me want to talk. They felt, they said in the expression in Kenya Rwanda that they, the, the heart gets soft, that they wanted to do, you know, they wanted to ask uh, forgiveness to the families that they had done wrong, also those who before would not do that. Yeah. Um, so it is, again, this that it is, Without language, you can heal from anything that you have done. That goes the same like for war veterans in the U.S. It's easy to say the things that were against you when they hit your platoon. But what you did in revenge, very difficult to express. And then you will continue living with that if you cannot heal those parts too. And that you can do with this technique. Yeah, especially since the technique is non-invasive. I mean, there's, there's the, the guilt of surviving when other peoples didn't. There's the shame of surviving. Uh, and there is the, that of being a survivor is different, and there's also the shame and the guilt of being a perpetrator and not having to talk about that. And that's, we're coming to that now because we're coming to what is specifically that we're doing different uh, because non language also means we're, we're not doing set up phrases or affirmations. So we're getting back to that in a few seconds. We just have one more slide of this. So, um, yeah. Yeah, and this is also in Rwanda. So this is a refugee camp of um, Congolese refugees. Um, and here, our colleague Nurigo, she did the same. She met some of these refugees. She asked them if they had similar problems that she had after the genocide. And they said, yeah, the children scream at night. They have nightmares. We feel, you know, <clears throat> have headaches and, and, and having flashbacks to what we lived through. So she started teaching them. And at the same time, telling each of them um, to teach others. So she said, next time I come back, you have to have been teaching five each. So she, was, she did the teaching, the first one, with um, the, the, the responsible for each part of this refugee camp. Um, and then when we came back, and like some weeks later, they were already from eight, they were already 40, and then they have multiplied. So now there are 7,000. At this time, when we did this slide, there were like 7,000 who had been reached. And so that's why we say it's scalable at low cost. It costs nothing, just the willingness to reach out to other people and, and, and showing this, this technique. And they love this technique. Yeah. Our costs are usually uh, transportation, which is quite expensive, water for the actual workshop, and some kind of um, something 
as a contribution to the person who is doing yeah, it. Yeah, copies. Uh, and copies of materials, because we also try to convey and communicate TTT in as many different ways as possible. Being language free is one thing. We have a, we, we boil it down to a minimum of language, but we also try to reach people where they are in their cultural setting or their cultural context or whatever way they're used to seeing and relating to things. So one way we saw this in Rwanda was to have an artist, in this case, we didn't find one in Rwanda, we found one in Nairobi, uh, to paint from our pictures, our photos of Rwanda, the actual tapping points, and we created a calendar. This is the base of the calendar, actually all the months were on the sides of it. Uh, so just imagine that being a calendar instead. And we translated this to a number of different languages. We print them as posters because a calendar people will put on the wall in a school, in a home, and somewhere. And it, what we need to convey to people is healing is possible. Trauma or stress is not a chronicle, lifelong, you know, uh, verdict. It's something that you can actually self-regulate and stabilize. So our shortest instruction in any language of the whole TTT is think about whatever bothers you and tap 15 times on each point, point one to 14, using two fingers. Take two deep breaths and repeat. And like Bert said in the beginning, um, yeah, you could miss a point, you could tap with the wrong finger, you could be on one side or the other, you might not do the breathing, breathing perfectly. And of course it's gonna be different if somebody who knows this is doing it for you, maybe that will be a 95% healing or, or resolution of self-regulation. But just doing this does a lot. In fact, we have people who have been to come as refugees, for example, to Sweden, who are recommended to just go and watch one of the movies we made and they just did it on themselves watching the movie and the day after they realized that they had slept for a full night and the nightmares were gone. So poker is one way, but another way is uh, through a cartoon to try to make it um, visual for children and grown-ups. Again, we do have a very small explanation, but even if you couldn't read that, even if that was Chinese and you don't know how to read Chinese, you might probably find out how that works from the cartoon. So again, we need to communicate in whatever way is rational to the people we're talking to at the moment. Uh, some people will only listen to clinical trials and proof and um, empirical evidence. So we usually bring out this document, which Gunilla can tell you about. Yeah, this is just uh, this article that I mentioned in the beginning that was written by and um, Dr. Johnson became um, my mentor. Uh, and this was after going with thought field therapy to uh, Kosovo after the, the, the war on the Balkans. So this was published, and, and um, that was, as I have understood, um, the first um, scientific article published about this TFT. And um, that, for some, will be. And then continuing, because there are a lot of, of surveys and a lot of research being done after that, and sometimes you have to bring that up. It all depends on where you, where you are. Um, in Sweden, when we talk about the nervous system, people say yes, even if they don't understand what you're talking about, they will say yes. If you're talking about um, energy or meridians, they will say, oh, what's that, you know, what's this, uh, the, the proof about that? So that uh, all depends. But when you come to India, we were at the conference in India, and there, I mean, everybody is, is acquainted with the, the Eastern uh, way of looking at, at the, 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 the body-mind. They never divide, so they're so easy uh, with anybody from East, from, from, from Pakistan and East. It's very easy to, to, to show these techniques because it is just, oh yeah, it's like yoga, or it is like Qigong, or it's like this. Oh, that's fine. Good. Yeah. We know how it works. So, and last of all the ways we communicate, we have, uh, well, we have the, the visual poster made local, and we also created a scientific poster for uh, medical conferences. So we're trying, we're trying to convey TTT in the two ways, trauma tapping, tension tapping, 
in every possible way so that people get access to it and try it, investigate it, research it, uh, teach it are themselves. Right? So, do we have any questions so far or are you ready for the next step of the study? Well, I have, a, I have a comment, not a question. I think when we were talking about um, re-traumatization, um, and I'm, I'm, the, the, the word's escaping me now, um, well, flooding, you know, you said the, but I, yeah, ab reaction. Uh, I think the reason that you guys don't get the ab reactions is because you are so confident and you're so uh, in touch. I mean, when you, I, I think really people worry so much about ab reaction that they get reaction, ab reaction. Yeah, I think we, when, you, when you don't worry about it, when you just go in as if ab reaction is not going to happen, and even if it does, big, so what? I mean, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Uh, you, you know, if it does happen, then you know you have a tool to deal with it, and um, and and you and you can do other things too. But if that's the biggest sin you commit, well, I, I don't think it is. I think the biggest sin is don't do anything. You know, exactly. that's the biggest sin. Exactly, that's what we say. It's unethical not doing anything when you have a tool, um, because people have survived their app reactions because many have had their panic attacks before it's not a problem people have survived them before and then uh, exactly as you say bird you have a tool that you know can help that but it has become like some kind of very weird um um things around this and a fear that actually uh, makes people suffer for a long time unnecessarily now yes yeah, yeah, actually no, yeah, I, i've had uh, you know lots of people ab react in my office as a clinician and um it, it did not do, you know, it didn't re-traumatize. That's what people are afraid of. It's going to re-traumatize. A little bit of re I mean, the whole point is that you do have to get into that field of, uh, of some kind of suffering or pain in order for it to work. So you've got to get a little bit of it anyway. And, you know, that's why we call it, you know, uh, uh, we'll give all these fancy names to it. But anyway, I, just, I think the fact that you guys just don't worry about it, that it just doesn't even happen for you, that's great. You don't expect it to happen. No, no, we really don't. Okay, uh, just a question. Is Emily and Raya still there? Did you just turn off your video or did we lose you? I'm, I'm still here, my video cut out. That's all right. We feel you. Well, there's Raya. Hi. Well, there's Raya, excellent. That's all good. Okay, just checking out. We don't want to lose anybody here. Okay. And my, my computer's turning on and off. Sorry. Um, it's so very interesting images because <laughs> it's like it's making a whole complete loop. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm, I'm, my husband's watching in the distance. And um, so I have it on the computer, but my computer keeps shutting down and then I have to switch to my phone. So sorry, it's, it's gonna be a little weird. It's part of the entertainment system, it's fine. <laughs> Okay. So somebody has noise in the back. And I'm in a, I'm in, yeah, I have a lot of noise, a lot of people here, so that's why um, a lot of action started happening. So I'm going to mute again and maybe stop the video again, but I'm here. Excellent. So if we're cool with that, that's step one. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do step two. We need just do a self-tapping the way we do self-tapping with a group, okay? So for some of you, this is going to be something you know already by heart. And for some of you, it might be something new. But it's nice if you have a video, if it's on, if you don't, that's fine too. But we trust you can see us. And if you got uh, Robin, and Shein, can you see us? I'm not Robin. No, Robin can't see us, can you? No, I cannot see you, but I know the point. I, I so. can't. Okay. I can't see. We'll just read them out so that you can join us at the same time. Great. Thank you. Okay. So, what we use. Diane can't see them either. Okay. But I know the Exactly. So, I'll just mention them. So, usually, if we have a group training for this, uh, that's where we start. A group training is usually we do the greeting. People are seen and heard in their name, so they tell what their expectations are and, and why they're there. So 
people can feel comfortable with each other. And then we start the self this thing. And we usually tell people just to connect ever so lightly to anything that bothers them. And if they feel any sensation in their body, that, that will be enough. Because in our experience, you don't need to connect more than that. Okay. Not sure. So, here we go. We're going to do it together. Now, sometimes we even do something called, which you can read in the book, which you all received as a PDF, called a somatic poem. So, we can do that just so that we enjoy ourselves a little bit more. So, just say after me, okay? And do what I do. So, this is Follow John. So, imagine. 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 Imagine a rain falling on you. Imagine a rain falling on you. On your outside. On your outside. On your outside. On your inside. On your inside. Rinsing. 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 Cleaning. 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 Everything you've seen. Everything you've seen. Everything you've heard. Everything you've heard. heard. Everything you smell. Everything you smell. Everything you smell. Everything you smell. Everything you tasted. Everything you tasted. Cleaning your throat. Cleaning Cleaning your throat. The dust and burden on your back. The dust and burden on your back. Whatever's in your chest and heart. Whatever's in your chest and heart. Cleaning your stomach and your gut. Cleaning your stomach and your gut. Going through your whole body, all the way down to the ground. Going through your body. So people will be standing up as we do this. And then we ask people to take a step forward. But we won't do that now sitting down. But just imagine taking a step forward in your life. And from here, if you're standing up, you've just left a kind of a timeline. You've left uh, whatever cleansed you behind you, a little step behind you as a starting point. This is enough to connect to start the tapping. So let's start the tapping. It's two fingers. It's the karate point. So it's the point where the little finger meets the karate chop side of your hand. And we're tapping at this speed. We start now. So Cheyenne and Robin, we hope you're tapping with two fingers on the karate spot. Like, and we say like 10 to 15 times, but again, we keep coming back to what Bert said. It's not a big deal. Whether you do it a bit less or a bit more. Yeah. There is no overdose, as we all know. And then we lower to your, where your eyebrows meet over your nose. And then you follow with your fingers to the side of your eyes on the bone. Follow with your finger and trace to the ox bone or the cheek bone. On your lip, up lip, on your chin, between your lip and your tip of your chin. And then it's the collarbone. Under the collarbone, you can use both hands. And we do this a bit more. I mean, even if the point is under the top of the collarbone, we do this, what we call it, wild. Or like the guys in the mountains there in Rwanda and Uganda and Congo, the gorillas, because this is like a gorilla tapping. And then under your arm, around 10 centimeters down, where your bra strap would be if you had one. Even if you have one. <laughs> We're not asking. <laughs> We're just saying. We're just saying. Those who have one, they know where it is. And for those who don't, they would know where it would be. And then you put your hand with your thumb up in the air and you want to go up to the very tip of your little finger. Two fingers on the tip of your little finger. You can use your thumb to support it. To support it. And then you go to the tip of your ring finger. Tip of your long finger. Tip of your index finger. And the tip of your thumb that, that is 
in your side of the body. And then you go back to the gorilla tapping. So this is a complete half session. And now you get your hands down, you breathe in through your nose, you hold your breath, and you breathe out with a sigh and allow yourself to go heavy. With your mouth. Really heavy. Breathe into your nose. Hold your breath a few seconds. Breathe out with a real deep sigh and go heavy. There you go. And now we do the karate spot again. Now you can do the other hand or the same hand. It doesn't matter. Sometimes the body likes those things that go across from one side crossing over to the other side. So it's good. It's also with the left hand if you're right handed and right hand if you're left handed. So you can try to do it on the other side. And here we usually ask, does anybody remember what the next point was? And you guys, you all know. And David is going for the eyebrows over the nose. That's lovely. Eyebrows over the nose. Will somebody lead on to the next point? Side of the eyes, excellent. Side of the eyes. Can we go to the next point? Under the eyes, on the cheekbone, the large bone, beautiful. And then, right, so upper lip, that's great, under the nose. And the next point, is the chin, beautiful. Between the lip and the tip. After that, we're going to the gorilla point. Gorilla tapping all over the chest. Emily is leading. One zero, Emily. Beautiful. <laughs> I can't see you rubbing it, Jan, but I'm guessing you're doing this perfectly. Not cheating just because you don't have a camera. Up here. And then, all right, the bra strap. Whoever has one. And for those who don't. For those who want to. There you go. And after that, the tip of the little finger. Tip of the little finger. Support it with your thumb if you want. And then the tip of your, that's it, ring finger. Beautiful. And it's the tip of your long finger. Girls in juvenile detention call that the birdie. And then we have the <laughs> spear. <laughs> yeah, you were in the juvenile detention center in Los Padinos in Los Angeles teaching this. And then the thumb, very typically on the side. All right, and who's going to show the last concluding point? Yeah. Yay, there we go. Over the chest. Christine. Gorilla tapping once again. Christine is leading. Beautiful. And after this, relax your arms, breathe in through the nose, hold your breath, breathe out with a deep sigh, go heavy. <sighs> there you go. Breathe in through your nose. Close your eyes if you want to, breathe out with a deep sigh. <sighs> there you go. Beautiful. Great. And keep your eyes closed and just, you know, sometimes we ask people before we start, if you want to, you can rate, you know, with SUVs, subjective un units of distress, you can rate your feeling, whatever you're going to be tapping on from zero to 10, and then you can note the difference now. Or you can just note whatever you note. And even if this is a therapeutic session, we never say, so is it good now or anything like that? We don't lead. We just say, what do you notice? Yeah, just observe. I mean, and then perhaps going through the the head and the outside, the inside, the eyes, the, the thoughts, the shoulders, the arms. Yeah. yeah. So much the back and down to the legs and the feet on the ground. So yeah. just notice. Good. Fantastic. And then just take one deep breath again and breathe in. And then on out breath. <sighs> open your eyes and come back to our fantastic meeting. Oh. So, the two breaths have replaced the eye movements and the, and the nine gamut and, 
from the TFT. Um, and the reason for that is not that it, this, the, there is this, how many of you have done the line gamut? How many of you do the eye? Yeah, so, so then I'll like, explain to, to, for you who have not done it. I mean, it is like tapping on this spot here while I'm doing an eye movement, circling the eyes, looking up in directions, humming a tune and counting, which is very good for the connect, making the connection between the two hemispheres of the brain. But the thing was that the reason we have taken it away, because that's how I learned TFT, is that when we started having trainings in other places, people thought you looked so crazy when you did this. Uh, and looking crazy is not a positive thing. Uh, and also it became almost the only thing that people remembered because it looked so crazy. So they, oh yeah, you did something with the eyes, even if they said, oh, I will never do that. So, but breathing, it's like um, Emily said about breathing technique, wasn't it? It was you, Emily. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, and the, the breathing is our direct communication with our nervous system. I mean, breathing in and then having a longer out breath because the in breath is connecting your sympathetic nervous system, going to action. And then the out breath is activating the parasympathetic nervous system. That's why in all yoga traditions, the out breath and the focus on breathing is very, um, um, it's very severe. What do you say? It's very important. Uh, but the out-breath is what calms down your nervous system more after having the in-breath. And holding the breath will actually make your nervous system relax because that's, it's like, okay, I don't need to do anything. And then breathing out. So it is very, very good. And, and doing this in-breath and out-breath, you call it the alpha-theta breathing. It's uh, also in Fred Gallo in one of his books, he's mentioning this um, alpha-theta breathing. It's, it's very good. So that's why we have implemented and taking it in and we see that it works very fine. And if that is the only thing people remember, it's very good because breathing is the basis of life, as we said before. It's, it's like you, and if you can have a good breathing, you can calm down very easily, you know, so. And then we do this sequence twice. And then our colleague who you saw in the red, uh, um, checked shirt in, in, the, in one of the photos in the, in the PowerPoint. One time there are women in, in a village in Rwanda, they asked, so why do this thing twice? It's the same, first and second, why do it twice? And then we said that, yeah, but you know, you're washing your clothes because like many people in the world, you're washing clothes by hand. First you wash your clothes in water and soap. Okay, that's the first sequence of tapping. Then you take out and you wring the clothes. It's the breathing because breathing also releases things from your system. But you never put out your clothes for drying just after washing with soap, you will also rinse them. So the rinsing is the second round. Then wringing the clothes again, putting them up on the wherever you dry your clothes on a line, over a bush, over a chair, wherever you dry your clothes. But then, even if you have done this twice, perhaps when you have them up, you see there is one spot still there or several spots, they're not really clean. Then you wash again. That means there is no rule. Coming back to what Bert said, and Mark said, there's no rule that you only do it twice. If you feel still not calm, you just continue until calm. That's why you say you have this contract of continuing until calm. Then you do it again, you wash again, washing another round. So that's washing and rinsing. That's why we call this TPT. You wash and then you rinse, you ring up. So that's it. Good. And, and depending on who we speak to, because people ask, you know, what, what, what is the mechanism that works here? We all know, we've been having extensive discussions with John Freedom and, and lots of other people, like Dr. Ronald Rudin, who has been the creator of Haven Techniques, which is, comes from research about tapping and the mechanisms, uh, Dawson. There are so many different explanation models, and we just embrace all of them fully. So, you know, you could say that it's energy meridians and there's, there's block energies in, in the, you know, in the meridians, or you could say that it's a matter of uh, relaxing the nervous system. It could be that you're associating in your body because you dissociate when you're traumatized and the tapping will bring you back. Uh, it could be memory reconsolidation because you're bringing up the memory and then you're confusing the brain with a load of signals over the body and then the memory is reconsolidated in a different way. So we embrace 
all of these explanations and they're in the book and you have the PDF. And we think that is the, the most open way of presenting this because we don't need to get in an argument. We're never defensive. Uh, we know it works. <laughs> We've seen it work in thousands of cases. We know people who were treated 2007 that are still, you know, still feeling great. So we have quite a long follow-up, you know, the sustainability is there. So we don't worry about that that much. We, we embrace every new idea there is. And also, you know, like Bert is saying, uh, being extremely confident is absolutely going to affect. There has been research showing that when it comes to psychological interventions, the intervention is maybe 10 to 20 to 25 percent of the intervention. And the actual uh, output or whatever you say, what, whatever the therapist does is maybe 40 percent. How you act. How you act, how you are. Just being calm. And again, be calm, help others, you know. So, yeah, there's, there's lots of different things about that. Uh, but this is the one way, you know, showing people how to do self-tapping. And in Rwanda, there's this wonderful article after the genocide by people telling the story of how the white people, the therapists, came to our village to help us with our trauma. And they came to our village and said there would be healing. But then they called us one by one into a room to talk to a stranger about what happened to us, a person we didn't know. There were no drums. There was no music. There was no communion. Nobody shared anything. We had to ask them to leave. So we truly believe this is not only a cultural setting of there. It's, it's a human setting. Social context is the most important part of mental health. Mental health happens in relation to other people. A broken leg happens in you, but your mental health happens in a social context. So actually doing it integrity um, protected in this way in a group of people, we believe that is so much more empowering, so much more healing, so much more of the actual social context. And a way to do that and not having it dead serious is in part by integrating with music. And not only because music is a way of, of interacting and an easy way of learning and an easy way of remembering and it's fun. And also because music actually has been proven to be the one thing that engages most of your brain. So actually when you sing, you're synchronizing breathing. And synchronizing breathing, you're calming down the, symp the sympathetic nervous system. And when you sing in a group, you're creating social context and group, but you're also reactivating most of the brain that actually shuts down in a traumatic reaction. So we're gonna show you a short video, uh, which is how we do this with music. And it's a simple way of doing it. And you know, some people just look at this video and they sing along. So if you want to create a workshop and you're not, don't feel musically in a musical mood that you can just watch that video and have people sing along with it. So we'll show this to you. It's done with a group called the Gisenyi Acrobats in Rwanda at Lake Kiwu. And uh, it's, it's a guy who just trains street kids in acrobatics uh, to keep them off the street and to give them trust of the body and trust of each other. And exercise is one of the main points of the healthy mental health. So, yeah, and they all orphans. And they're all orphans. So, um, bear with us. Here is a short video coming up for you. Okay. Here we go.
Okay. question uh, I know we said uh, two hours but we we'd, we'd like to continue slightly more so is somebody rushing off to um, a car wash or something no. are we good we're good okay. oh, I'm good and we have an we have an extra guest now yeah, so hi. yeah. new participant <laughs> <laughs> excellent so yeah so what we've done is we've asked people to 
create songs. Yes. Well, it actually, yeah, look, there's two dogs now. Uh, so. <laughs> hey, can I interrupt a minute? Can I interrupt a minute? Yeah, yep. sure. Yeah, hey, um, is there a way we could get access to that video? Yeah, Absolutely. everything is on everything. our website. Everything is on our website. Uh, and, and oh, that one, I got the cartoon one, but okay, great, yeah. great, thank you. Anything we do is yours, yeah. just spread it. You know, and in Berlin recently, we were doing a training with Malteser and the, and the um, what do they call the Cardiosis. Cardiosis, 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 yeah. And, and the, they were talking about, you know, pollination, actually. It's like we're peace bees. You know, we take whatever we have here and we just spread it and pollinate the world with peace, right? <laughs> so that, that's, your, that's your mission, please. So, that's great, thank you. This all started um, by chance. So Ganil will tell you the story of how the actual tapping songs started. But we believe it's a fantastic way to give people a way to make it their own because people usually make their own song in their own language after trainings. So here's the story. Um, and it comes back to, if you remember, the, one of the pictures in the, in the first um, uh, or in the PowerPoint, uh, it was from Sierra Leone. So I was there together with this colleague from Rwanda, Robert Mahabova, and uh, we were going to these different villages. And then when we had been teaching the tapping, these guys just started doing a song because um, for them, that was the best way of remembering the sequence and remembering how to, to, to do it because they all came from different villages. They had been walking these women for hours and hours in the morning to come to the meeting. And then they were going home to share this with the other people in their village. So then to remember it, they just created these songs. And it was not like, oh, now we sit down and somebody wrote the notes and so it was just instant. They did the rhythm. And then they started chanting this. Maybe like this one, it's like two fingers tapping. You're tapping here, you're tapping there, you're tapping there, but in their own language. And um, yeah, I can show a bit of it actually. And uh, we'll just show this video. This is from this video is from Sierra Leone, and that was how this started. And then when we met different people, and Ulf is a professional musician, and of course it was easy for us to continue doing this music um, work. So, as Ulf said, we encourage people to, to, to do songs in all different languages and in all different, um, uh, without uh, video. So, we have a song from South Sudan, from Congo, several, from, from Sweden, from Sierra Leone, from Chad, I think we had one, and from the, uh, so from all different places we have this video. We'll just show you a bit of this from Sierra Leone, you'll see how it all started. Yep. Into 11, I think this was. Here we go. Yeah.
So, 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 so this, this, um, it was something I was thinking of this. Yeah. So here you can see a different, I mean, it all depends. As you see here, there's this, the drummer is tapping this woman is kicking the throat. No problem. In, in, in another place, not, not possible. And also this, that this direct reaction that people just feel because as you know, the traumatic response can be constant that you even don't have to connect to anything because it's connected all the time. Just by doing this different song that we have created, parts, we have seen healing just by doing the song without saying anything. Just doing, tapping. Because the radio is on all the time. Uh, for some, you don't even have to say something, you don't even have to think something, but it, it is constantly on. And for that, you can release just by this, what we call like the, 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 the relaxation version, not, um, not to say consciously connecting to anything, but you are connected because it's there. For many people, it's there all the time. So this was, uh, yeah, so this was um, what happened there. So you saw these guys, they went back with all the different songs in different villages, and then they went back. In the end, one woman, she says like, yeah, now she has learned this, she will go back to her village and share the medicine, they call it the medicine, medicine with the other women. So that's how. Yeah, so we don't want you to feel any pressure, but uh, the assignment <laughs> for next time we meet is the Seneca Pilates song, the Emily song, the DeWitt song, the Stephen Carter song, the Susan song, the right, you know, the Earth song. If you want to add dance steps, that's fine. You know, don't worry about it. It's all going to be good. Yeah, so these are there on the website, and that's exactly that for two that we're saying before. I mean, you just. I already got. I already got mine. It's going to be to Old McDonald. Uh, <laughs> All right, that's excellent. Perfect. That's perfect. Right. Old McDonald. Old McDonald had a problem. E I E I O. He yeah. tapped tap here. He tapped tap there. Yeah, perfect. That's perfect. perfect. Yeah. yeah, and also there's lots of children's songs and stuff. You know that you can convert into. It just makes it easier, and it's high hemispherical. The moment you have movement with it, so it's fine. Uh, now, what we're going to be covering today is... What, wait, wait, just one thing more. I, I, now I remember what I was thinking of the, in that film. Because this is exactly the opposite of this bringing people into a white room with a stranger and talking about it. Because as yes. she's, she's tapping me. It is somebody is feeding their child, somebody's screaming. So when people ask, what do you need for this training? I say nothing. You know, uh, do we need to... Oh, we perhaps we cannot close the door. It doesn't matter. We can do training in any environment. It doesn't matter. 
because it's, the important thing is that the people are there, they want to learn. And then if it is uh, under a tree or in a conference hall, no, 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 doesn't matter. Or in a subway, like Celine, yeah. or you know, at a party, or <laughs> I've done it whatever. in airports. In airports, also, and people are running to the gates, and people have this, have healed from all different kinds of stuff. So no, no worries about that. So coming back to work, there's no answer. What is yes or no, correct or incorrect? Just do it. That's yeah. what we say. Just do it. <laughs> and that's why one of the parts of the manifest, which we will be summing up, is uh, use what you have. Don't ask for more. Don't ask for more time or more space or more experience or knowing it better or not being afraid or, or you know, all of those things. Just forget them because the only way that you make a cake is by breaking eggs. You know, you just need the experience. So just do it. Right? You really need eggs for baby? Yeah. Yes. Well, not everybody nowadays. Not everybody's allergic to everything. But, you know, once upon a time there were eggs and cakes and at that time learn how to do them by breaking the eggs actually. That, so what we want to cover today is we want to cover our attitude. We want to cover the way we convey this. I mean, the points, you can see the movies, you can see the instructions, you have the book. That's not an issue. We want you to soak up, you know, how easily it can be done in a group setting. And we will be having a second session in a month or less. And up to then, you know, we want you to do self-tapping. We'd love for you if you're up to that, to try tapping on somebody else. And we want to go through what the main differences are because there is a, quite a, a leap from actually self-regulating into helping others to regulate. So by doing that, we'd like to walk you through a kind of a summary of the points that are the backbone of how we teach and train TTT because we don't actually treat people. We teach and we train. By teaching and training, we also treat. But the focus is, we're going to show you something that you can use, not I'm going to help you to feel better, right? So this is part of the whole empowerment process. You saw the woman who was tapping Gunilla in the video. She was, she, was, she was not in the mindset of, oh, this person is here helping me. She was in the mindset of, oh, my God, I can help her. You know, that's, that's where we want to go with this. All right. So are you ready for a, a little sweeping walk, a dolphin swim through, um, through some points on a PowerPoint? Yeah. Not the tapping point. No, no, just point. a little dolphin. Yeah, exactly. So good. Hang with it. And I will be reading it out for you, both uh, Chayan and Robin. So don't worry. We'll send you the PowerPoint after. Um, you'll, probably have a, you. you'll probably have a nicer layout in your head than whatever's on the screen because PowerPoint is PowerPoint. But anyhow. It's green and black, just saying, it's like turquoise kind of, yeah. Yeah, we're going there now. I thought we were, but we will be. We will all be in a few seconds, yeah. So, meanwhile. Yeah, so there was one other thing I was thinking of in the, um, the video, what was that? So, um, we all, yeah, here we go with this one. It was something. Anyway, you just take it our point and then we see what happens. Here we go. Okay, so we go into the PowerPoint right now, and for you, Chan and Robin, it was all working perfectly all along. There we go. So, first slide says TTT, first aid for emotional and traumatic stress or for stress and trauma. And the subtitle is language free help for laymen and professionals. One of our mottos is learn in 10 minutes, do it in five, All right? So we're just trying to make people understand that it doesn't have to be hard. Anybody can do it. You should be doing it yesterday. When it comes to mental health, the definition of mental health is quite interesting. Mental health is dependent on basics like rest, food, water, and exercise. Those are better than any prescription drug out there. So if you exercise, you're hydrated, you're fed and you're rested, you're in a better place than any treatment can bring you. The next part is that mental health is not something like a broken leg that happens inside your body, it's something that happens in the interaction between you and other people. So mental health has a social context. By providing a social context that is safe, that is embracing that of a group 
session, you're actually promoting healing in one of the most essential ways. So we actually think that group training is more efficient than one-on-one -on -one training. We've yet to prove that with a clinical trial, but you know we're getting there. Uh, acceptance is a vital part of mental health. Accepting whatever feelings you're experiencing, whatever you have in the past, instead of trying to fight it, because when you fight and try to hold back and run away from something, that's what self-medication or, you know, clenching your teeth is all about, then it just grows. That's what you do in a gym. You take a weight and you lift it up and down, you know, and then your arm becomes stronger. So if you're fighting the acceptance of a bad emotion, the bad emotion is being trained to be stronger every day until one day it overpowers you. So accepting whatever that is and using the tapping to relax you to accept it is a vital part of healing. A vital part of mental health, of not becoming depressed or giving up, is to have some sense of meaning. So when they interviewed survivors in the, in the prisoner of war camps, um, they said that those who preferred to see a meaning in whatever what, happening, what was happening then, in the future, they said to themselves, Whatever I'm experiencing now, I will learn something from that I can use in the future when I look back at this. That is the mindset of a survivor. It gives meaning. There is a beautiful book by Viktor Frankl, if you can write it down, you know that word, that is called Man's Search for Meaning. He was a psychiatrist and a survivor of the, the concentration camps in Germany. I can really recommend that book, Man's Search for Meaning by Victor Frankl. You don't have to write it down. We will be yeah. sending you all these titles. He was the, the constructor of local therapy and other therapy. Yeah. Yep. Empowerment is a vital tool of healing. If you want to help somebody, don't treat them. Teach them, train them. Make them understand that they are survivors. Make them understand that they are unique. Their experience, once they are on the other side of it, will help them to help others more than anybody else can do. Anybody who survived something is a person more capable of helping others in that situation in the future than anybody else. Be prepared. Be prepared to succeed and be prepared to fail. Be prepared that whatever you're doing might not be thanked, might not be given credit. Be prepared that something can go wrong and that something can go right. Once you are prepared for the best and the worst, there is nothing to fear. There's absolutely nothing to fear if you accept that anything can happen. Focus now and forward. If you want to try driving a car, looking out the rear mirror only as you drive forward, that's what it's like to live in the past. You're going to be hitting other people and objects, and you're not going to be on the way to the right place. Focus on now and whatever is in the future, and use the past to learn from, but not to navigate from and learn strategies for self-regulation. Now, self-regulation is a word that is becoming um, trendy right now with, in these places where we are teaching stuff like energy psychology, which is a word that raises a red blanket for a lot of people with medical training. Um, what do you mean energy? What do you mean psychology? What do you mean meridians and tapping? And what is all that mumbo jumbo? If you say, oh, it's just a stabilizing technique for self-regulation. A lot of people who never heard of it go, ah, that I understand. Working without words is the next slide. And working without words has three main points. There are no set of phrases and there are no affirmations. So the question we get is, how do you, how do you replace the set of phrase? Well, to be frank, we're working in places with people who know exactly what they feel bad about. Can you explain a bit what this set of phrase is? A set of phrase for somebody who, if you don't know what a set of phrase is, is in, e, in, in EFT, there is a set of phrase where you say, uh, despite 
this and that having happened to me and me feeling this and that way, I still love and accept myself fully. Now, with some of the things these people have been through, that is not going to work. It's not going to work to say it out loud. It's not going to work to say you love yourself fully. And it can be re-traumatizing as well. Our experience since 2007 is say, telling people, connect ever so lightly to whatever bothers you. They know what that is. And there's a thing about affirmations. If you say, despite whatever, I love myself, in some cultures, that's a very strange thing to say. And regardless of culture, if you don't love yourself, you're not going to convince yourself just by saying so. Now, if you close your eyes and you say, I'm in Paris, real loud, let's try that. Just close your eyes and let's all say, one, two, three. I am in Paris. I'm in Paris. Louder, more conviction. I am in Paris. I am in Paris. Open your eyes. How many are in Paris? <laughs> See, that's what happens. So if you try that again and you just say, I want to go to Paris one day. <laughs> yeah. Try that. I, I want, want to go to, to Paris. 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 Paris one day. One day. Ah, I'm sure you notice the difference. In one case, you're trying to convince yourself of an unreal thing. In the second case, your brain is going, you do? Real? Why don't you buy a ticket or take a train or hitch? You no, know? because the <laughs> options are there. So if you do affirmations, do I want to. But working without words works fine. We don't ask about experience. Yes, Stephen? An even better way is to use the word I choose. Mm -hmm. I choose to plan to go to Paris or I, I choose to as opposed to want. Yeah. Uh, Pat Carrington's done a lot of work around the choices method and I certainly commend her work to anybody who's interested in working with the verbal approach as opposed to just, just a som somatic. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. Exactly. Thanks. So we don't ask about experiences. We, we're not curious about why, what happened to people, why it happened. And the answer to whatever they're feeling now is not what happened then. It's what is being recreated in their head now, which could be completely different from what happened. So we don't ask about experiences. We ask, you know, can you connect ever so likely to whatever bothers you? Yeah, and how it's manifested in the body, because that's where the unsafety is felt, is in the body. Yeah, and, and whatever you feel in your body is actually a language of its own. It's the body talking to you through hormones and chemicals in specific places related to whatever you're feeling. And in the words of Carl Johnson, Dr. Carl Johnson, who, who showed this technique, no suffering. That's one of the reasons for working without words. There is no need to relive or rephrase or repeat whatever happened. Next point, next slide says, make stress and trauma your friends. Well, that might sound strange, but by understanding stress and that stress is actually there to protect you and how it does that. Now, you were all sent a link to a movie, The Bucket of Resilience, which kind of explains stress. We also explain that with a glass of water, uh, which we can look at after through these slides. But understanding stress is part of the empowerment. A lot of people, when you explain to them that, you know, not being able to sleep or uh, pain in your belly or a chronic pain or migraine or uh, the need of self-medication is a natural response to emotional or traumatic stress. A lot of people take a sigh of relief and say, oh, how great. That means I'm not crazy. So understand stress and understand the encoding of trauma. The encoding of trauma is in the movie, The Bucket of Resilience. Just understanding that trauma is encoded into your nervous system and the encoding responds to triggers. Those triggers can be something that you actually hear or see or feel or something you imagine. <clears throat> You also need to understand traumatic reactions. We're talking about this on the level of the survivor, not on the trainer. 
we want everybody we are training to understand a bit about this because then you're in charge. You're understanding why these things are happening. You also should understand that trauma, there's a transference of trauma. You know, my sister was raped. I wasn't. We live in the same house. Yeah, well, maybe you have a shame of surviving and not being the one raped, and maybe her trauma is being transferred to her children. And by understanding that, it also makes sense to do that as a whole as a whole family instead of just doing it, helping the person who allegedly was a survivor. This also comes to, of course, the vicarious trauma that can and secondary trauma for people, for example, working as volunteers that we do to help others and not really taking care of themselves also. Like we were in Lesbos in the island in Greece where at that time in last year there came a lot of refugees and a lot of the volunteers, they got so sick because they didn't sleep at night because they wanted to be of, of help all day and all night long when there came new boats coming. And that was of course from a good heart, but it is not from a good mental health um, um, perspective. So they, I mean, like three days of no sleep and also listening to a lot of stories, you can get very, very sick. And that's why you should also understand soul meditation, understand how emotional and traumatic stress eventually manifests physically in the body so that you recognize the symptoms. And that's why we wanted you to do those, um, those forms to fill in the forms for the questionnaire before the training today. And if you haven't done it, please do it after because it will go through uh, the points of somatization that actually are um, flags that there is a traumatization or stress. Just to understand them, answer the questions. And again, understand self regulation. Once you self regulate and any regulation you do is going to be self regulation whether it's by the help of medication or by the help of somebody else, it is yourself that is regulating. So just understanding that what you need is to relax. Now, coming from hypnosis, there are three things that make people relax and that turns off the nervous system, the, the sympathetic nervous system. One is control of breathing. When you breathe out, you are not actively stressed. So stress comes on breathing in. So breathing out with a sigh is the body's own way of saying, whew, I'm glad that's over. So a sigh of relief is actually programming the body to relax. Number two is actually trying to become as heavy as possible. When your body is heavy and you can feel its heaviness, you're turning off the sympathetic nervous system. You cannot be stressed out when your body is completely relaxed. Trust me, I've done dental anxiety and all I do is make people relax in the dentist chair and they actually do not feel pain in the same way. The third thing is to allow your eyes to gaze without focus. When you go into a daydreaming stare, you cannot feel stress because the stress response goes into tunnel vision. The opposite of tunnel vision is daydreaming gaze, which also, by the way, gives you more of 360 vision, which is excellent for relaxing. So those three things together. That's why a lot of hypnosis is fix your eyes, go dazed, take a deep breath, relax, and go deep, and you become heavy. So alpha theta does that. Daydreaming gaze is just a, a side thing, but I think it's nice to know. And just becoming heavy in the body. Right. So the TTT toolbox, you know, it's not, we don't only do the tension or trauma tapping. We have a, a number of self-regulating techniques. Now, tension tapping technique is the one you just learned. And trauma tapping is the same. It just, it's just the intent of it. And uh, then we have head holding techniques and it's just extremely simple head holding. Now we can't show you uh, Cheyenne and Robin, but we're guessing you know this. I mean, that's what we were talking about in the beginning. That is a part of what is uh, the technique called APA's acupressure technique. Simplify and use in many different I mean, parts of the world, like all these gestures. You will, um, people have always been holding on to make people feel safe. 
but it also gives connection between the hands, uh, the, what you say, the palms of the hand um, from one side to the other. It also connects, as you say, the visual, uh, what you say, the, 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 the visual, visual center? Visual. Yeah. yeah, on the front and the, and the back. So it gives like a new view of old stuff. That's what, how tapas framing would express it. Um, yeah. So that is a very good, it, and it's very comforting, especially if somebody's really agitated and the trapping is not a good, it's not a good idea. But the head holding makes people really feel very safe. It's like feeling held, which is often the, 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 the problem when you get into this anxiety is you're not feeling held. It's like you're lost you know, in the world. So this head holding is a very, very good calming technique for any situation. So if you have the trauma tapping and you're doing trauma tapping or something and somebody just says, oh, oh, I just got this exploding headache. And instead of continuing to tap, you can just hold their hand for five minutes. And we often finish the tapping sequence actually with this thing that you can, and you can even pulsate a bit, holding a bit more and then uh, like that. It's very, very interesting. Yeah. Well, head holding techniques are good to know. They're in the book, in the PDF. Alpha theta breathing that we do between the two rounds, you can do that as a relaxation exercise in itself. It works lovely over Skype. Just tell the other person, take a deep breath, hold it, and breathe out with a sigh, and go heavy. Exactly. Somebody <laughs> just did that. Wonderful. Uh, and then we have blowout. Blowout. We'll show you that in two seconds, okay? Because we can see you, but you can't see us. And then we have do in, which is a, a self energy massage, which there's a wonderful video of Ganilla doing that we'll send you that you can it's just on the follow. website. Yeah, it's on the website. Yeah. yeah, if you haven't seen. It's like uh, I mean, you're going through the whole body, just actually tapping with your palm, or almost all over on your fingers, all over your body, which makes yeah. things circulate of all different kinds. It's a very very. Yeah. We're going to finish the last slide, but before we do that, we'll show you the blowout so we don't have to get back to that. So, um, just make sure you have your arms free. Um, and Chien and Robin, just follow my instructions. Blowout is a wonderful way of evening out the whole nervous system. It gets rid of carbon dioxide, which builds up in your stomach because you're breathing shallow and high. It uh, focuses, it energizes your brain, it gets rid of adrenaline, it lowers cortisol, and it takes like three seconds. So, breathe in and reach your hands above your head. Hold your breath. Pull down your arms with your elbows first and breathe out. Oops. Don't, don't hit your partner, right? So let's do that again. Again. And when you do that as a group of people, it also brings unity to the group and it <laughs> oxygen to the brain and it gets rid of that shaky, I need to hit something feeling. So we're back to the share screen and we're back into the PowerPoint. And then we have the point of working in cross-cultural groups. The greeting of joy is something we always do. We ended up with some greeting so you can remember it, but the greeting of joy is a great way to start. Be seen and be named. By asking everybody to just say their name, call their name out, and ask them why they're there, it creates a community and it allows us to know each other. It diminishes the teaching environment. It becomes more of a group learning environment. If you're going anywhere where there's a group already formed, cultural or survivor or whatever, find your alleys. Find your alleys. Maintain integrity every step of the way. Nobody needs to talk about they've experienced. Some of you have shared that you have had experiences in the past and what's happened to your family. That adds a lot of value. It makes us understand more, and, and it's, it's, a, it's a precious gift you're giving. But if, it's, if a person is not prepared to do that, they don't have to. The somatic poem you can read about in the book, that's what we did in the beginning with the rain and everything. That's an easy game way to connect to whatever it is before you start self-tapping. Music in any culture works lovely. 
and it has all the benefits of the science of how the brain works. We do a lot of games. So, um, you know, different ways. Of of one of the games we do, I don't know if you see these. How do you feel today, guy? I feel terrible. Yeah. I can't sleep. Oh, I'm so sorry about I that. I can't see. Oh my gosh, I'm blind. I don't know. <laughs> okay, there you go. We also sometimes bring balloons that we um, throw to each other. Um, the finger dolls sometimes can be a way of talk. You know, that's therapy, but it's parts therapy. You can have a finger doll when you're working with children to tell them that they can talk to their other self or the part of them back in time that was traumatized. This, these are just normal therapeutic tools that will work fine with kids in cross culture. <laughs> And one of the most important things that you can bring to any setting is laughter. Because laughter is the absolute most healing power there is. When you laugh, you dissociate, and you see things in a different perspective. We often bring a balloon, just one single balloon to a training, just to break the ice with people. And, you know, when somebody has a balloon and you start, you know, just bounce it to somebody and they, they just want to bounce it away and up again. That's, that's a wonderful way of, oh, come on, Emily. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> it's a wonderful way of breaking the ice. It's a simple thing and you can carry it in your pocket anywhere across the world. But it's not only breaking the ice because it, it is, nobody can play when you're, you're, you're doing this game. And, 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 and playing games will take you out of yourself. You, 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 you have to be distracted. You get distracted. It's also this that you have to look up and when you look up it's impossible to be depressed or having this because that's when you're feeling bad you do go more and more into the fetal position but looking up and it's like this that we did in the beginning this power position the more you open up the more you will open for the world and with this balloon it is like ah oh, you look up to the sky even you know so it, this is i mean it's, it's beautiful and nobody fails with a ball like this one Somebody will, oh, I, I can't take it. Because when you traumatize also, your focus will be very bad until you practice for a while. But with a balloon, anybody will take it. Yep. So there you go. We, just, we were just bouncing balloons, she and Robin. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> um, Thank you. So the issue of self-help self -help versus helping others. Up to now, we've been doing self-tapping, right? Even if we did it with music, even if we did it with group setting, even if it's kind of therapeutical, it's still, um, we're still uh, promoting self-help. Now, when the next time we meet, you, those of you uh, who want to will have looked into how to help others with the TTT, there are some things you need to think about that are the difference between helping yourself and others. Number one, you offer help, you never insist. You just say, I have something that has helped me or somebody else. You know, if you want to, I can show you. But we never, ever insist on helping anybody. Also, before we help anybody, we make a deal. We agree on continuing until calm. If something comes up, and we usually tell people it's like an onion, you know. You could be numb. And when the numbness goes away, you could be angry. And when the angry goes away, you could be crying. When your crying goes away, you could be you know, frustrated, and when frustrated goes away, you could be laughing, and then you're angry again, and then you calm down, because that's the, the onion of emotion. So just agree on continuing until calm. Also, we insist that you sit, like two ships passing. You never sit in front of somebody that you're going to help with your legs spread apart. It's, it's not polite, and it also is kind of a bad idea, because some people, if they are triggered, they may have something which is called defensive rage, which means they want to simply get out of there. And if you're in their way, it's a bad place to be. So by sitting simply as two ships in the night passing, you know, we'll show you that, um, then you're cool. You're showing yourself first. This is what I'll be doing to you. I'll be tapping these points. Is that okay with you? You ask permission and you show them the exact point so that they won't be surprised if their eyes are closed. You know distraction techniques. This is a vital part. This is a trainer's training you're doing right now. 
So you're going to be wanting to help people. We talked about ab reactions. They never, ever need to happen. If people are experiencing an augmentation of emotion, which is totally unnecessary, the easiest way is to just back out and distract. And an easy a distraction technique is just saying, can you spell your name backwards? Can you hum a tune with me? Can you count in threes from 27? When people do that, parts of the brain that actually calm them down are automatically activated. So humming a tune, spelling your name backwards, or doing math. Either saying, what's seven plus five, by the way? Or can you count in threes with me from 101? That's 90, 98. That's, you know. Right. Also from the beginning, finding out something that the person likes very much. Flowers, gardening, swimming, playing football, running, whatever. You know, and start talking about that because that will also bring the person out of us. Ah, and the mind goes away to that instead. So that's very good. I mean, or I mean, at the same time, this tapping works, but um, it all depends on the situation. It's just very good to know that distraction actually works very simply. Math, visualization of something. Trust the method and yourself. Bring humor and support. Don't bring, don't bring the wrong kind of empathy. Oh, I suffer so much with you. Oh, I feel so sorry for you. That's the absolutely worst thing you can do. I'm so sorry you had to live through this. You know, being sorry for people that are hurting makes the hurting twice as intense. People usually want to hear something that gives them hope. Oh my God, you seem to be in a bad way. Can I show you this way of relaxing? And once you're done helping somebody else, you congratulate them. Congratulations is how we end every single session when we do a session for somebody. Because it's them that are doing the healing. That's a, it's an empowering part. People get very surprised. Yeah, they get surprised. Why are you congratulating me? Well, because you said you felt better, right? Okay. So, Last one. we're coming to the conclusion of today's training, in a way. And that is by coming to the manifest. Now, we kind of like manifests because it's a way of summarizing what is most vital in being able to do something. And the manifest of the trauma tapper is the following. Okay, we wrote this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, this manifesto is quite new. I mean, not the content of it, I mean, the way, but the formulation of it. And it was actually like this that when we were going for the conference at uh, this uh, ASAP conference in, in um, Santa California. Clara in California in uh, beginning of June, where we would have met Emily if she would have come. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and because she's working with the ASAP. Um, we came to, we landed in Los Angeles, which we realized after some time that it was much more far away from, from Santa Clara, which is close to, to, to San Francisco than we had um, got informed about and how we would have imagined, or I don't know. So we rented this car and started driving, but we were both very tired. And Ulf even has this kind of what we call narcolepsy light. That means that he falls asleep like this. And then driving um, makes things very, very dangerous, especially when it turned out that we had to drive for eight or nine hours coming up and both coming direct from the flight from Sweden. This nine hours time difference. So then Ulf, when he had to drive, oh, this becomes a very strange light. Okay. Anyway, uh, but he had to drive also because I had to sit for a while too. I couldn't drive the whole way myself. And I said, let's engage in something. Let's write a manifest. So this is the result. So this is on this beautiful highway from Los Angeles up north to, to San Francisco along the Pacific uh, Ocean, and um, this manifest came about. Okay, please go ahead. All right, so let's do the manifest. So the manifest of a trauma tapper, summing up what it's all about. Take your shoes off and listen first. Say that in any context you come to, now remember, uh, we talk about cultures, cross-cultural. Well, cross-cultural means uh, an, an American uh, doctor coming to um, an American war veteran, 
completely different culture. A carpenter coming to a, uh, a school teacher, completely different culture. Culture is not really that much about the country you're from or the religion you have. It's about, you know, your set of experiences and values. So always take your shoes off and listen. Come from a place of wanting to learn, of being curious, because you're going to be learning by every person that you meet, right? Be inspired. By being inspired, you will inspire others. Dare to fail. It's vital that you dare to fail. If you don't dare to fail, you will not succeed. Use what you have, whatever that is. If you don't have any hands, use your feet. If you don't have a carrot, use an apple. If it's noisy, never mind. Take no credit for healing. Yeah, that's the congratulation. Yeah, and it's everything. I mean, whoever is helped, whatever they're helped with, whatever they're helped, take no credit. And pay your way if necessary. If, I mean, if you really want to help people, you know, don't worry about getting paid. You know, if, if necessary, pay your way. And if not, get paid. It doesn't really matter. It's not about that. Well, wow, a double point. Ooh, you don't get to see this, Chan and Robin, but we have a double point here. I'll say, so bring humor and stability to the party. Whatever you bring in, bring humor and stability. And know your limits. Not only your limits in what you're able to do or not to do. Know your limits in when you need to sleep. Know your limits in when you need to exercise, when you need to laugh, when you need to take a step back, when you need to take a step forward. Just try to know them and then, you know, test them. Everything depends. Everything. There's absolutely nothing that doesn't depend. And again, after having said that, avoid every stereotype. Because the whole cause of racism or gender-based violence or violence of any sort is the creation of stereotypes. It's impossible to hurt a stranger without having created a stereotype of that person first. So I think fighting stereotypes is the main thing. Respect every person. Every person has a history you have no idea about Whatever they're saying is true for them. Yeah, in that there is this, I love this quote. It says, everybody you meet is fighting a battle inside that you know nothing about. Be kind always. Because it is like we, I mean, it's so easy. That comes to stereotype and thinking about somebody has not this or not that. But everybody has a, a battle inside and you cannot measure suffering. Um, so the battle can be of any kind and still everybody is fighting a battle inside and the way we can do is to, to, to approach it by being kind in different ways. So, also know that the technique, whatever technique it is, is part of the solution. Learn the rest. The technique is part of the solution. Try to find out whatever the rest is. Offer. Don't insist. And the last quote in the manifest. Are you ready there? Drum roll. Cheyenne, Robin. Be prepared for miracles. Yeah, it is miracles. Miracles do happen all the time, as you know. You have tried. Right. So, welcome back to the studio. We're, we're getting to the wrap up. I know that with, with 45, 46 minutes over time, we're sorry about that, but we just needed, you know, we needed to say all this stuff. Yeah, and I want to show a small video more. Do you have still five minutes to go? Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Excellent. Good. So we're going to show a video. Yeah, you're going to show it before, before we show the video, are there any questions so far? Because you will be on your own. We're going to... We're going to be calling you up in a month. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to wrap this up with how to help others. But we want you to check that out from the side of the materials. And we want you to watch some stuff that we'll be sending you, okay? Any, Any questions? questions? Oh. Sounds like a whale coming up to the surface. No questions? You're all just full of answers. That's good.
Here we go. Leila is sharing the screen. What are we showing? Yeah, so I'm... Um, right? I have no idea here. Yeah, I want to show, uh, or we want to show, but it, we just have to look for it. Um, uh, and just to put, I don't know how to say it, it's like the two ends of this technique. Um, so this uh, um, last video that we're showing for you today is um, a neighbor in my village in the west of Sweden. The, the daughter, her name is Nora, and she's eight years old, and uh, she will explain to you some things. In English? Yeah, in English. How wonderful. <laughs> But subtitle. So here we go. Meet Nora, eight years old. Yeah, so that was Nora. Just to you know, it is uh, for this that yeah, working in areas of of conflict and genocide, but uh, also with the neighbor child who gets worried um, about things that she want to accomplish in school or something. Uh, the parents get divorced and all this. That uh, we have the whole range of 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 using this technique. As you all know, who have been using this technique, that it, it is the same nervous system. Wherever we live in the world, whatever age, we have a nervous system. And we are in the womb, we even share the nervous system with our mothers. So it, it all depends on that. But still, this can be used. The nervous system works the same, whoever you are, what age, and, and whatever experiences. And this tapping is like, I sometimes say it's the language that the body and mind understand so well. And that is what is um, experienced in this magic, that it is the cold. I say that the tapping is like this, you know about this Rosetta stone when they found in, in Egypt, they could, um, that would definitely knows because he's an archaeologist, the Rosetta Stone, to, 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 to how to read the, 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 the hieroglyphs, you say in English? Hieroglyphs. Hieroglyphs. Yeah. How do you say? Uh, yeah, hieroglyphs. Hieroglyphs of the, the old Egyptian and the pharaonic, pharaonic uh, uh, prime. So they found this stone that was the, 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 the way to how to translate it and, and understand. So it's like this this, this tapping is like the, the Rosetta Stone has the way of translating what happens in the, the nervous system. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So, concluding today, we hope that you have received the information that you were hoping to receive. Um, if there was something missing, we'll be happy to say that it was totally intentional and you're getting <laughs> it next time, obviously. Um, so we hope to have a little mail conversation after this. We will simply send you the mails and we'll ask you stuff. We'll give you links to some of the movies we talked about. And we would like for you, because it's going to be a couple of weeks now, to do self-tapping. If you try to do a group training in any simple way, if you need support from us, 
tell us. We can Skype with you personally. Uh, we can give you whatever support you need to just try and do a group training. The group could be your, your dog. You know, it doesn't really matter. It's about doing it. It's about breaking those eggs. So um, bake whatever cake you want. Tapping others, if you already have the experience of working with others, please do try the TPT way. Uh, just, you know, just try it. We have people who have just seen it on the website and try it. We're going to be sending you the cartoon movie, those who haven't seen it. And then in a couple of weeks, we'll join again, and um, we'll round this up, and we'll see whatever questions you have, experiences, and we'll go through a tapping somebody else session. And if you have somebody that you would like to do that with, bring them to that webinar. Just like here, just push the computer away a bit and you can be doing it and we can check you out uh, because cert getting certified in trauma tapping is you treat six people and you write down your reflections on the treatment, you answer an assessment of science, which is you will be getting a form to and you sign our code of ethics, uh, which involves among other things the manifest. So, how does that feel for you? Feels <laughs> great. Feels good. good. Mm, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you for your beautiful stance on healing. It's really just refreshing how much wisdom you bring to the practice and respect for people. It's it's really it's really nicely put together. Thank you so much, and thank you so much for supporting. The, the, this trauma relief project because it's three different projects that are so extremely important and they're going to be making a great difference. So thank you so much for that. And she yes, is, I mean, we have to mention that this is, I mean, a lot of the work of Emily that uh, yes. this all, all our us together. So we yeah. thank you, Emily, so much for love bomb on Emily. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good. And everybody who has been contributing, and, and please, Robin and Cheyenne, uh, you will simply have, have to send pictures of yourselves after because we didn't see you now. And maybe we'll see you next time. We don't know. But I hope it worked out for you to join us on the phone. Did it? It did. It did. Excellent. And, and I'm also... Yes? I, this is Raya. I, um, my full battery yes. in my laptop went, so I'm on the phone now, too. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh, this is Cheyenne. It, it was uh, it kept cutting out, but it worked okay. Good. I got a lot of the audio. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you will get the recording after, so you can watch it afterwards. You can see how you look like without an image. <laughs> and follow everything you saw in the, in the next. So well, that's fine. You will be all the things that cut out, you will, you will find them hopefully in the recording. Yeah. Did they take well, is this a link to them? Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, we'll send you. We'll send you everything. Don't worry. Anything we have, it's yours. Perfect. Perfect. Hey, it was, uh, it was really great to connect with you guys. Uh, yeah. This is probably as close as we've gotten in uh, the past couple of years. So yeah. it was really great. It was a lot of fun. It was a fantastic presentation. Uh, I really got a lot out of it. Yeah, good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Guys. And everybody yeah. else, if you want to see, if you yeah. want to read something that Bert has written, he has written part of, of uh, in the PDF, you can check out Bert writing in the forum. Of the, our book, yeah. Of our book. That's what he means. You've yeah. been a great support for us. You, you all have support for us. By the way, I'm a certified uh, laughter yoga leader. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and we did that. It, we did that when we were in Rwanda in 2009, and uh, it was really great. And I, and I love, I love the way you guys bring in the just so natural. Uh, you know, I think that's the key. It's just being so natural and spontaneous, and doing the things that that people do just so naturally, dancing and singing and laughing, and. Um, you know, those are the things. Whenever a family, any kind of group of people gets together, that's exactly what they do. Yeah. And uh, and I think you're absolutely right. That that is the healing. It's the it's the caring and it's the love and the technique. I think is very powerful yeah. in itself. But I I don't think it. I think you, uh, as I said before, you can miss this or you can miss that, yeah. and it still works because it's in this big package. It's in a big package of humanity. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you all so much for spending I'm a time. I'm an after yoga leader. So. Who is that? Thank, Thank you. you. Who, who said that? Who said what? Who said what? 
that they were also Bye. on. R yeah. Rye? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm Cheyenne. Sure oh, Cheyenne. Hey, yeah, Cheyenne. That's, yeah, it's so much fun, and it's a really good exercise, too. You'll it, sweat You'll sweat your butt off. It is great. <laughs> it's a workout. It's a real yeah. workout. Yes. <laughs> great. Thank you. Well, namaste. Bye -bye. namaste. Namaste. Take care, guys. Okay, bye, everybody. Thank, thank, thank you all you. so much. Bye. Bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.